Hello everybody, this is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemont and this is Chris Rodriguez. We are a hockey podcast covering everything Admirals, Predators, and from time to time, Floyd Everblades. Um, today's show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800 or visit HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Hey, you can get all your hockey gear, all your hockey needs, all your figure skating needs, all your roller hockey needs, and his future is yet again bright. <laughs> so, with that being said, let's get into today's game because we have a lot of work for us today. We have another video coming later, our In the System video for all you Florida Everblades fans, Predators fans. We're going to break down the whole system, including the Predators roster. And we'll also bring, break down the Admirals roster while we're at it. Yep. All right, Admirals beat the Rockford Ice Hogs 2-1 overtime. <sighs> there was 5,000 fans in attendance today, and the weather outside was pretty craptastic. All right, shots on At goal. least it waited for us to get out. <laughs> yeah, it started snowing again once we left the arena. Anyways, uh, uh, shots on goal in the first period were 7-6 uh, Rockford. Uh, then it was in the second, 10-8 Milwaukee. In the third period, it was 18-4 Milwaukee. And in overtime, Milwaukee gets the game winner. Off of one shot. Yeah. It was 30. We outshot him 35-19. That's a lot of shots. Uh, Rockford was 0 for 3 on the power play. Milwaukee was 1 for 3. Uh, Rockford and Milwaukee each had three penalties for a total of six penalty minutes. All right, go. All right, the Admirals had... Uh, so six points, which means they had two assists on each of their goals, and Rockford had two assists on one of theirs because they had three points. All right, so scoring in the first was Lucas Carlson, his fourth with an assist from Jacob Nielsen, his 11th, and Brendan Hagel, his eighth. And from there, it was in the second period, was kind of blah. It was it almost was like they were trying to figure each other out. And then in the third period, the Admirals came with. Well, a lot of intensity and a lot of firepower. Um, they obviously outshot them 18 to four, so that means that they were they were trying to tie this up. They didn't care how they did it; it's that they did it. Um, the score the goal was scored in the third by Rem Pitlick, his 13th, with an assist from Tommy Novak, his 13th, and Jeremy Davies, his 13th. Today's show is brought to you by the number 13. <laughs> the news: Rem Pitlick's good at hockey. He's been great the last couple of games. He's um, definitely been getting points. And then in overtime, Freddie Gaudreau scored his sixth goal. Freddie Hockey, he's been getting on the point sheet a lot, too. Uh, his sixth goal with Daniel Carr, his 17th assist, and Jeremy Davies, his 14th assist. Yeah, Davies has been waking up, too, the past couple weeks, actually. Three stars of the game were uh, Rem Pitlick was the third star with a goal. Uh, Kevin Lankin in with 33 saves with 35 shots. And the number one star was Connor Ingram with 18 saves on 19 shots. Uh, you just broke down the goalie stats right there. Yes, and uh, attendance, like he said, was 5,789. Um, that's a lot for a blizzard. Yeah, was, <laughs> but like like I said, said, let's just put it that pretty, way. It was a blizzard. Yeah, like I said, the weather was pretty crappy today. And thank you for everyone that came out to the game despite the bad weather. Yeah, thanks for supporting the Admirals. Um, and it gave you an overtime victory as well. Even though that last goal, the uh, referees had to review it, that overtime goal. Um, we also we also hope all of uh, our fans that and Rockford fans I, I don't care who if you just came as like a person to just get out of the house for a little while um, I just hope you all got safe I hope the players get home safe yep. and I hope the players for Rockford get back safe um, you know this is a, not exactly the safest weather to be driving in so nope. and who knows what it's like down at Rockford right now. Yeah, but even that... Like who I said, knows? who knows? Like, just leaving Milwaukee, it's pretty bad. We were spinning just driving home. Yep, uh, I look outside right now, and I can, you can see... You can see across the street. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty well, bad. we are upstairs in our little studio. Yep, it's nice. Oh, by the way, congratulations to all the folks that came up and got this wonderful hat. I do like the hat. It does match my jersey a bit. Yeah, well, <laughs> what do you mean a bit? It's black and gray. This is like I think it's actually like a dark... Blue. I haven't figured it out. Oh yeah, yeah. I it's, can't tell. Is that dark blue or black? I don't it's know. dark blue. It's like a. a it's close um, enough to the a stormtrooper. He'll be fighting Jedi's later. 
I love that jersey, but I'm gonna keep cracking that joke. You'll be fighting Jedi's later. Well, once I wash it, I'll probably let him wear it one game or two. Cause <laughs> right. Cause I, I have do enough. Like Pontus Aber, who was and I do have enough life. jerseys where if he ever gets wants to wear one, he I always all he has to do is ask. He yeah, not to mention I do like Pontus Aber. He was one right, of the guys. So the really Admirals in their last five are three, two and three, which is fine. We're staying around the. F- yeah, we're still in first place in the league, so we're good. As and the Admirals now are two or three oh one and oh against Rockford. Mm, bacon. Yeah, but well, you... white. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, haven't seen our other video, we made uh, I made a joke when I posted it, said we made bacon out of Rockford. Mm. This bacon. time we swept up the bacon and completely cleaned it. <laughs> See, we're not making cop jokes. We're talking crap about Rockford. But we oh. do have friends down there, so yeah. Also, um, Pryor's organization this weekend that played Rockford. We played Rockford, swept them. Preds win against Chicago, 3-0. Yeah, yeah. In a 3-3, three and three, we're 3-0, three and oh, but we have a 4-4. Four and four. So on to our next thing, which is the Minot- Manitoba Moose. I mean, Winnipeg Jets. Hey, you <laughs> stole my bit. <laughs> you, I was the one I was going to say the Manitoba Moose, you jerk. Oh, uh, yeah, I know how you uh, feel anyways, about the tomorrow, Moose. Uh, tomorrow at 1 o'clock Central Time, uh, the Predators play the Jets. All right, their top line consists of uh, left wing Kyle Connor, uh, center Mark Scheifele, and Patrick Lineater, right wing. Uh, Connor has 22 goals, 22 assists. Uh, Shifley, 22 goals, 29 assists. And uh, Patrick Line, 15 goals, 26 assists. Watch out for that uh, front line. All three of them guys have been playing great. Uh, Shifley and uh, Line, they're consistently good for Winnipeg. Yeah. Like Shifley, the last couple of years, has been he's been consistently good for Winnipeg. Alright, then we got Nikolai, uh, yeah, Ewers. Nikolai e- Ehlers, Ewers. Uh, Ewers. Blake Wheeler, and Andrew Kopp in the second line. Uh, Ehlers, 18 goals, 19 assists. Uh, Wheeler, 14 goals, 26 assists. And uh, Kopp, uh, 7 goals, 9 assists. I and wonder if it's Cope. Uh, I'll, I'll call it Kopp, C-O-P-P. I'll just say Kopp. You never know. We'll be corrected eventually. Yeah, we'll be corrected tomorrow. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't worry too much about their third line. I mean, there's really nobody that jumps out at me in the third and fourth line for their forwards. Uh, their defense, eh. It's not that good either. Well, Josh Morrissey, he has four goals, 21 assists. He's their, uh, for, uh starting, uh, defenseman along with Tucker Poolman. He only has, like, 11 assists and two goals. Nothing really to worry about there. What is that? Neil, Neil, uh, Neil Ponyak. Ponyak. What he said. Uh, 25 assists and 4 goals. Uh, what is that? Lucia. Lucas, Lucas Savisa. What he said. <laughs> uh, 5 assists and 2 goals. Yeah, their defense, I want to really worry Who's that third about. line? Because I thought I was. Oh, yeah, it's Sammy Niku and uh, Dmitry Kulikov. They're, they're not that. Yeah. Their defensemen are crap, so basically pay attention to their front two forward lines. But I would, what I would do is I'd just try to keep them off the scoreboard if at all possible. Yeah, but you've really got to tighten the screws when you're trying to play defense against Line A and uh, Wheeler. Play like you did on uh, Wednesday and your, or Thursday and you're good to go. Play like you did on Thursday and you're good to go. Yeah, but other than that, uh, their last game against Winnipeg... Uh, we lost to Winnipeg. I do believe that was two to one. Let me hurry up and check that out. Where is it? I had you lined up and then start. Yeah, November nineteenth, Winnipeg beat the Predators two to one. Okay. Now is their last meeting. Now is at Nashville. This game is going to be in Manitoba. All right. So the starting goaltender is Connor Halbach. He's played thirty six. Or 37 games started 35. He's 20, 12, and 4. What the what, hell is Dustin Buffler at? Uh, he is currently injured, slash retired, slash not wanting to play for Winnipeg because they don't want to pay him. Oh, 
okay. Because I was going to say, that made no sense not having Dustin Bufflin on that uh, lineup I gave up. Um, he has a .919 save percentage and a 2.69 goals against average, so he is not that good. Um, compared to us, he's about average of what we have. Um, Laurent Brossois, he has a .886 save percentage and a 3.65 goals against average with no shutouts. Connor Hellebuck has three shutouts and an assist. Uh, be aware this game is probably going to be a physical contest. It seems like the last couple of years when the Predators and uh, Jets get together, there's a lot of fights. Uh, right, especially so, last season, there was a lot of physicality between the two. All right, so, so be currently, currently, if the Predators pick up a W over the Jets... They'd jump them. And no, the, uh, we would be at 9... 49, meaning we would jump three points behind them. Um, also, uh, Minnesota plays tomorrow against Vancouver, who is also right there with uh, uh, with us. So uh, no matter what happens there, either we're going to get jumped or, or Winnipeg is going to be able to jump over Vancouver or it's really a mess right now. Vancouver's so. playing Minnesota. I have no faith in the wild. So maybe Minnesota or maybe Vancouver will stand pat. But if Minnesota wins and the Predators lose, what would that do in the situation? Uh, Minnesota would jump back over, but they the Predators still would have a game in hand, and they'd still okay. only be a point behind. I just so figured I'd just ask you that because literally tomorrow the two games we're going to be watching is uh, Winnipeg and Nashville, and then Vancouver and Minnesota. We'll be watching those two games closely tomorrow. It makes sense because like, all four of those teams are currently fighting for the second wild card spot. Along with anybody's Winnipeg. Gonna jump so. over unless somebody catches fire. Calgary's well, actually been playing good lately. Calgary's on a four-game win streak. Like I said, they've been playing good lately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I I fear anyone who has to play Dallas, they're on a six-game win streak. Um, but other than that, everybody else... Uh, uh, Winnipeg's on a one-game losing streak. They're 4-4-2 four, four, and two in their last uh, ten. 10, and so are the Predators. So something's got to give. Yeah. So, yeah, this, that's what happens when you're in a good division. Everybody gets log jammed into certain spots. Like, literally, from three, third to sixth place in the wildcard standings is all the central division. Yeah. The rest of it is the West Coast, seventh, eighth, ninth. So. Yeah. The West Coast is only going to get, like, three teams in, and, yeah, the Central's getting the rest. Or pretty damn close. Yeah, uh, so this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. We will see you guys in a little bit once we get everything Technically up. tomorrow, but please stay tuned for In The System. Yes. We will be covering our next game tomorrow. Stay tuned for In The System. Yeah, we have to get better at closing it like that. All right, guys, see you tomorrow. Go to Hockey Locker. Spend money. If you tell them that we sent you and you don't spend money, you're bad people. We don't know you. Yeah. If he you asks, we don't know money. you. Oh, make sure you buy CCM gear. You can get some uh, Admiral tickets if that promotion's still going. Yep, I'll call on Monday and find out. Well, give them the rundown of how the promotion goes before we close it. All right, so if you spend $100 on CCM gear, you get... Um, I thought it was two. No, $100, you get uh, two, two, $100 on CCM gear, you get two Admiral tickets. Uh, $200, you get four. And uh, 500